Japan 2023. People board a train and head to work. Everyone is busy with their own things. Scrolling through Instagram feeds, making acquaintances on social networks, and discussing plans for the evening, unaware that in just a few minutes, their lives will change forever. Suddenly the train's speed increases, and strange things start happening. A bottle cap rolling on the floor of the carriage suddenly disappears. Passengers begin receiving alerts about powerful earthquakes on their phones. Then the train enters a gloomy tunnel and comes to a sudden halt. People regain consciousness, bewildered by what has happened. One of the passengers opens the entrance doors, and people screaming and pushing each other rush to the exit, jumping from the high steps. But once outside, they can't believe their eyes. Traces of the civilized world are gone, and they are surrounded by the remnants of a destroyed city overgrown with trees and grass. Moreover, all the carriages have disappeared without a trace, except for the fifth one they were in. As time passes, the passengers begin to get acquainted. One of the guys, Shirahama, a firefighter, examines the injured and suggests checking the tunnel behind the carriage. He is joined by a girl named Katana and a guy named Hayashima, who also wants to understand what happened. Meanwhile, the police in the city cannot figure out where the last two carriages have gone, while the rest of the train, along with the passengers, remains undamaged. The three volunteers enter the tunnel and walk through the dark underworld for a long time. Suddenly, they notice a light ahead and hurry towards it, but when they emerge outside, they are astonished. There is nothing around that would remind them of the year 2023 with skyscrapers and technology, just a vast, lifeless desert. Shocked, the trio returns to their fellow misfortune mates. Initially, people do not believe their report, but after Hayashima shows a video recording of the surroundings, they are forced to accept the new reality. After seven hours, people languish in anticipation of rescuers, when one of the girls, Reni, secretly looks into Hayashima's bag and finds a letter marked with the criminal department's seals, leading her to suspect that the guy's a criminal. Then Reni snatches food from Katana's bag, but, thinking she was seen, discards the package. Hayashima picks it up and carries it to the train, just as Katana discovers the theft. Seeing it in the guy's hands, the passengers accuse him of theft. Moreover, Rennie reports about the letter from the colony. Offended, Hayashima denies the accusations and announces his departure. At this time, Shirahama pulls out a box of fruits and offers to share them. While Katana is distributing the food, one of the guys reviews the video he made earlier, clearly showing Rennie stealing the food. Realizing that Hayashima is innocent, Shirahama and Katana run after him, managing to save the guy who nearly falls into a deep ditch. In gratitude, he confesses that he works as a hairdresser and is already 30 years old. But he refuses to explain the origin of the letter from the colony. Night falls. Passengers somehow settle down to sleep, but many cannot sleep, worrying about their future. In the morning, people begin to realize that they may never return home. Shirahama tries to gather the scattering people, but a friend asks the guy not to take responsibility for others' lives. Then the firefighter confesses that because of him, his colleague was injured, losing the ability to walk. Now he believes he must help everyone he can. Together, they catch up with those who left and persuade them to return to the carriage to solve problems collectively. Seeing this, Hayashima remembers his brother, who was in prison, and the letter in his bag was from him. Fate had it that he had to take on the upbringing of his younger brother, and he still feels guilty for his older brother becoming a criminal. Meanwhile, a couple of passengers explore the surrounding area and find the ruins of a high tower. This is particularly strange because the news reported its construction, which was supposed to be completed in 2026. And one of the passengers found a can in the forest dated that year. A biologist among them encountered a plant whose genetic modification takes 30 years. It turns out that they are in the distant future of Earth, and it's far from a joyful discovery. At the same time in 2023, all channels are broadcasting messages about the disappearance of two carriages, which had at least 100 passengers. Night approaches, and many fall into despair, while Katana and Shirahama place plastic containers on the roof of the carriage, hoping for rain. In the morning, the biologist draws the other's attention to the dense greenery, which means there must be a body of water nearby. A group of youth sets out to explore the forest. Along the way, Hayashima confesses that his parents are criminals, and then the guy spots a frog. This means water is very close, but ahead are impassable cliffs, which can only be climbed with the help of ropes. 
The group returns to the train and cutting wires heads back to the cliffs. Shirahama climbs to the top and joyfully shouts upon seeing a waterfall, but looking around he is horrified. Instead of Mount Fuji, a sea stretches out before him. Returning he tells the others about this and people start to speculate what happened to their planet. At night everyone goes to sleep, but the eldest passenger, Tanaka, goes outside and sees an unfamiliar person, but when he tells about it, no one believes him. Then it starts to rain, helping people to collect water and even bathe. Meanwhile, the biologist continues to study the surrounding fauna, finds several edible plants, and shows them to the others. And still, Katana manages to eat a poisonous berry, but fortunately, her poisoning is not fatal. The news that the girl has recovered has a sobering effect on the passengers. They finally realize that sitting still, they won't survive. People get to work and even make utensils from bamboo. Bank cards turn out to be decent knives. The group of youths brings water from the waterfall and they prepare a soup from plants. But after dinner, some feel sick and the biologist discovers a couple of poisonous berries in the common pot. Someone remembers seeing Tanaka near the pot who is not among them. Shirahama sets out to look for him, but stumbles, falls, and loses his torch. After a while, Shirahama returns without Tanaka, but with Hayashima's previously lost barber tools, which he had sorely missed. In the morning, the biologist announces to the people that he is going to look for a river, which should be nearby. His friends go with him. But in the forest, they encounter a stranger who injures the biologist and runs away. The guys carry him back to the train, where fortunately there is a medical student who provides the injured with first aid. The others help as much as they can and pray for the guy. Later Tanaka unexpectedly returns from the forest. It turns out he worked for a security company and can show how to make traps around the camp. Reni asks Hayashima to fix her hair, and soon there's a cue for the guy. Meanwhile, Shirahama and Katana notice a teenager caught in one of the traps, but the youngster gets out on his own and runs away. The friends hurry after him and soon find themselves by the river, but the boy asks them to wait for him at the spot and disappears into the forest. Hayashima, noticing their disappearance, catches up with the pair. At this time, the teenager returns and leads the friends to carriage number six, which mysteriously ended up several kilometers away from the fifth carriage. The passengers from the fifth carriage are welcomed by the leader of the group from the sixth carriage, Yumamoto. Their carriage was lucky to be near the river, where there was plenty of fresh water and fish. Moreover, among them was a builder who, under his guidance, they were able to quickly set up a camp and even build a kitchen and a toilet. The newcomers find the one who injured their biologist. He confesses that he did it out of fear, thinking they were going to attack him. He bows deeply, apologizing for his action. And Yumamoto admits that he believes a return to the past is possible. The man told them that in the early days, they found a small boat on the river where he managed to fix the radio and catch a signal, apparently from Canada, where the year 2060 was mentioned. From what he heard, the man understood that in 2026, a disaster occurred. A huge asteroid fell to Earth, causing powerful earthquakes and tsunamis worldwide, instantly taking billions of lives. The dust thrown into the atmosphere blocked sunlight, leading to the extinction of the remaining species. But the main thing is that the asteroid didn't fall by chance. It was space debris, as besides state corporations, satellites began to be launched by anyone who fancied. One of the probes collided with a satellite, which in turn fell onto an asteroid, leading to a deviation of its orbit. So it was a man-made disaster. That's why it's so important to return to their year and change the future. Inspired by the example of the sixth carriage, the passengers decided to make a bath by the river. Meanwhile, Tanaka continues to deteriorate, making himself a doll from branches and talking to it. In the morning, the bath is ready. For the first time in many days, people bathe in hot water and wash their clothes. And the guys find a strange stone on the riverbank, which Yumamoto learns about. He sends his people to find it, but Reni notices strangers, and one of the guys lets slip that where according to their leader, this stone might help them return home. The girls argue about the need to return, and Rennie pushes Katana away. She falls and accidentally shifts a layer of soil under which a dead body is discovered. Meanwhile, Tanaka reads in a newspaper an announcement about the search for a murderer in his description. At that time, Rennie and Katana are attacked by guys from the sixth carriage, but Rennie breaks free and runs to her own, where she tells about the found corpse, while Katana escapes from the guys through the forest. 
The fifth carriage decides to make weapons, while Shirahama and Hayashima run to the neighbors. But the girl is not there, and Katana meanwhile makes it to the boat. Yumamoto is forced to confess to the guys that he killed one of the passengers, who suddenly became aggressive and started attacking people with a knife. That's why he was recognized as a leader. The guys go home, hoping that Katana has returned, but she's not there, and the rest urge to go to the sixth carriage and punish the guilty. And the guys go again to look for the girl. Katana hides in the boat when Yumamoto comes in. He pretends to be calling an unknown station, but the girl sees that the wires are cut. The man discovers her and confesses that he doesn't want to return to the past because he intends to create a new society here. After that, he ties up Katana and locks her in the cabin, where her screams cannot be heard. In the morning, the passengers of the fifth carriage are just about to attack the neighbors when one of the women suggests backing up and looking for a building where they could hide. At this time, guys from the sixth carriage go to the neighbors to scavenge something, but they fall into traps. A fight starts when the rest of the sixth carriage's passengers arrive, and there are more men among them. The fight escalates into a real battle, which is stopped by the appearance of the escaped Katana, who accuses Yumamoto of lying. He is forced to admit to the deception, but he just wanted to keep people's spirits up. However, the passengers decide to exile the former leader. Before leaving, the man hands over a journal from the ship, which contains information about the tower that could help them return to the past. Meanwhile, those who went to search for the building reach the tower, and find glowing asteroid fragments there. And in 2023, scientist Ray, after reviewing the video surveillance camera recordings, discovers that a wormhole appeared in the tunnel at the moment of the disappearance of two carriages, which apparently was a result of a distortion in the space-time continuum. The passengers study the journal found by Yumamoto and learn the exact date of the disaster. Moreover, they have an asteroid fragment that possesses a phenomenal magnetic charge. One of the passengers remembers how on the day of their departure, he saw something in the sky resembling a falling star. In the past, Ray, analyzing the same event, concludes that it was the flare from a supernova explosion. In the future, there's also an expert who explains that supernovas occur in space when a star reaches the end of its life cycle and explodes, releasing a massive amount of energy. Apparently, this created the temporal rift into which both carriages fell. It means they need to open this wormhole again. In the evening, a strong storm begins, forcing people to seek more reliable shelter than the carriage. Tanaka opens the rear doors leading into the tunnel. Unexpectedly, a strong gust snatches his doll and sucks it into the wormhole caused by the hurricane. But as soon as the storm subsides, the wormhole disappears. And in 2023, scientists find Tanaka's doll. Passengers in the future conclude that to summon the wormhole, they need a powerful energy source, for which they start looking for remnants of power lines. Digging up each post, the passengers find an electrical substation where, somehow, working equipment is preserved. They redirect enough electricity into the tunnel to stabilize the wormhole with the onset of the next storm, enough to return to the past. The storm starts at night, supported by the power of the substation, the wormhole opens, and everyone enters the carriage except Tanaka who refused to return. The carriage is swallowed by the hole and races somewhere in space and time until its doors are opened by security service employees who say they have arrived on May 1st, 2026, which means there are only a few months left before the asteroid falls. After going through quarantine procedures, the passengers tell the officials, presenting as evidence fragments of the meteorite and unusual plants from the future. Only the officials don't believe the stories about the upcoming apocalypse. Later, the internet buzzes about the incident. The time travelers find fans, which helps maintain interest in the traveler's story about the upcoming end of the world. Meanwhile, scientist Ray becomes convinced that the travelers are telling the truth, as he has also tracked the asteroid. One of the passengers posts an appeal on the internet telling ordinary people about the impending danger, and a passenger who held a high position in the government before the trip makes her way to the Minister of Defense. She listens to her former colleague and reports that the government believed them and is already preparing to launch a missile capable of altering the asteroid's trajectory to pass by Earth. Time passes, and the day of the catastrophe is about to dawn. The travelers decide to gather together on the platform to find out whether it was possible to avert the disaster. And if not, to perish together. 
but the military successfully completes their task and changes the meteorite's trajectory, saving humanity from total extinction. Quite an unusual series where various theories about the impending doom of humanity are mixed. And the finale of the story is very relevant, emphasizing that life on Earth is the result of the actions of each living being. And the future of the planet is a collective human responsibility.